from New York City. We're here at NFT NYC. My name is David Cash, editor-in-chief of NFTS.WTF, and we are here with the incredible Tara Naomi. How are you doing today? I'm, I'm doing well. I'm a little cold. I'm a little tired. Yeah. Um. Day four vibes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like all week conference vibes. I don't know what day it is. I don't know what time it is. I feel like that's been my life for the last nine months, though. So it's In and out of the metaverse. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like it's sunny out, so it must be daytime. We're doing yeah. all right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so how have you found this week? I know that it's been such a journey meeting so many people in person. Mm. Um, how has it been for you? And is there anything that's really stood out for you being here uh, in New York right now? I mean, I, I kind of had this idea that I was going to come here and like go to all the parties right. and do all the, meet all the people. Hypothetically. And right? I've met like five people. <laughs> I mean, it's been great. The people that, you know, I've loved, I lo I've loved everything I've done so far, but I've definitely done less than I thought, and which I think is actually much more reasonable because I'm an intense introvert. And so it's like being around this many people is actually pretty overwhelming for me. And yeah, <laughs> so, totally. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of come out in the morning and I go to some panels and see some people and then like retreat back to my brother's where I'm staying nice. and then like go out again at night for like one event and then yeah. I come home and I'm asleep by one and it's, it's very reasonable. It's so reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm like, who, who am I right now? Like, I'm so reasonable. Responsible adult. Like, responsible yeah. Adult. Yeah. Finally. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, That's good. But I mean, that makes sense, though, you know, coming from this space and being such a decentralized space and so virtual, yeah. um, you know, we're able to do so much just from the comfort of our homes. Um, yes. And I know you've done so much on Clubhouse. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious for people watching, um, how has that process been for you? And uh, maybe to follow that up, I'll ask if you met any people from Clubhouse in person. But yeah, how did the yeah. Clubhouse thing start for you? And, and how has um, that process been? It's, it, it's been great. And now it's like a lot of Twitter spaces, you right. know. Yeah. Um, for me, it's really good because... Uh, I prefer not to leave the house, right. and so I can be social, and then I can just be like, oh, connection's going, bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> be like, oh, I lost Wi-Fi. I don't know what Sorry. happened. You know, just like duck out when yeah. I need to and like not feel like I have to stand and hold a conversation, you know? So it's been a really amazing way to connect with people during yeah. this time also when, Absolutely. you know, we, we really didn't have other options. And, when did you get on? Um, I think I... I think I joined at the end of December. Wow. Yeah, yeah. that's last year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And pretty quickly, like, found my way into the NFT spaces, which is something I was already exploring off Clubhouse. And cool. then was like, oh, there's all this, you know, there's all these NFT spaces and rooms and right. community on here. And so... I, uh, I met a lot of great people pretty early on, and we're all sort of going through this journey together, you know. So it's it's been great. Beautiful. So yeah. I want I want to talk about a few of your projects and some oh, of the crazy sure. work that you've done. Um, but you were quite early to NFTs. I mean, I, I minted my first NFT. It wasn't called an NFT then in 2019. Yeah. yeah. Um, but even if you're in 2020, super early. When was yeah. when was your first experience with NFTs? What was that like for you coming from music? Like, what was that first like interaction? I made a piece. It's an audio visual uh, sculptural piece and animation and I made it because I was trying to figure out you know coming from music I was like well do I music the music space has grown so much in just the last couple of months even you know and um in January it was sort of like well what do I how do I contribute to this space as a musician you know and I'm also a visual artist so can I explore some of that and like I I made something uh, in Blender that was um sort of like a I can't really describe it. It's, you can see it on OpenSea. We'll plug um, it here. <laughs> you, can see it, you can see it on uh, on Foundation. That's where I sold it. And it, because I, in addition to singer songwriter stuff, I'm also a composer, and I had all this instrumental music that I loved and didn't really know how to share. Like, separate. where do what context you put that in? Yeah, right. exactly. And it's yeah. like, well, it's you know, it's sort of this weird instrumental music that I use to showcase my skills when I. But you probably you know, love it. Like, it's like oh, your passion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. And and I do it for film and television. But it's just like, well, aside from film and television. You know, this gives me a way to share that music that it's the same thing for like digital artists who were always before digital artists were creating work to be used in other people's projects. Right. right? It was a, it was so, just an object. Yeah. Right. So composers is the same thing. A lot of for a lot of us, it's like, well, you know, wh when we make something for film or television, we we put it into that project. But otherwise, what am I going to do with it? Right. Right. And so I had this idea to sort of. Um, make some digital uh, animations, some sculpture, digital sculptural animations, and um, set my music to that. And so um, I did that, and I, I made, that was like the first one that I minted. 
And then I did another project with my friend Andrew Dost from the band Fun and my friend Linus Dahlgren, who's a Swedish animator who's really wonderful. Oh, and right. yeah, and we did uh, a piece called Currency, which was just sort of a reflection on the state of... You beat Damien. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, we did it in... Uh, when did we do it? I guess February. Yeah. Um, and it's a song that we wrote. It's kind of like this... It's this fun little song called Currency, and yeah, that was that was cool. We did that, and then I released my. I got my rights back from Universal this year. Oh, amazing! So Congrats. it was thanks. Yeah. yeah, that was kind of a big deal, and yeah. yeah, it was it was really exciting to get that back. And then you know the timing was perfect because then I'm like, okay, now I know what to do with this stuff. You I'm know? a sovereign being. I'm yeah. an NFT person. I can do it. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. I can I can do whatever I want with them now. And so I recorded. I I made an async art project with my song Say It's Possible. And so there's 480 different versions of the song, potential versions yeah. of the song, depending on what the collectors decide to do with it. I don't know if you know how async works. Yeah, but, no, that's actually yeah. one of the things I want to talk to you about. Yeah. I think that's like the coolest yeah. thing that you're yeah. taking music to this next level. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's it's a very much a logical next step because at least like yeah. the royalties aspect of NFTs like made a lot of sense, I think, to the music industry. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting that art came first mm -hmm. um, in terms of like, the art world really mm -hmm. embracing it first. But I do really feel like music is ha it's happening now. And I yeah. definitely see you as one of the people who's like started to innovate in that space. Um, yeah. When did you start thinking about um, the fractionalization aspect? And like, I know async has been such a big driver for you, but like your work is incredible on there thanks. and you're doing things that nobody's done before. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Well, so it's, so async isn't actually fractionalized, but it's, it's the actual piece is interactive as in different people can control different pieces of it. And so, so yeah, so the fractionalization is not part of async, but is also something that's super exciting to the business, for the business, for the music business. And, um, I mean, I, you know, you mentioned something interesting, which is the art world came first, but to me that really makes perfect sense because there is a, uh, an established way to collect visual art. Right. And there was, you know, there's, there's precedent for that. That's not a, a big stretch. People are used to buying, you know, visual art and collecting it. But with music, recorded music specifically, they're used to just like listening to it for free. Right, so transitioning right. people over from this expectation of I can have as much music as I want, I can listen to it, you know, the as Spotify, much as I want to. Spotify, like ideal, exactly. Yeah. And that really, you know, set artists back quite, a, musicians back quite a bit, um, as far as the perception of the value, the perceived sure. value of recorded music. So re-educating people about this, and like, you know, I also believe that we can't put that genie back in the bottle. You know, it's like like people expect there's. Streaming isn't going away, right. and it doesn't need to. Yeah. But there's this other sort of uh, the next logical progression from crowdfunding, in my right. opinion, which Absolutely. is like actually instead of having this um, kind of false promise of like, the, like the thing with crowdfunding was, you know, make your fans into your biggest marketing team by involving them in the process, and they buy. And it's like, no, nobody's going to do that. Like you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> asking them to work harder. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, you're gonna, you're gonna give your. $25 to have somebody that you like make an album, great, and then you're going to get on with your life, right? right you're not right. going to sit there and like then shout it from the rooftops and right. be their marketing team. Exactly. But with NFTs, that actually happens because like when I buy into a project, when I collect a project that I'm excited you about. You champion it, yeah. Well, yeah, because yeah. I stand to benefit from that too. Right, absolutely, you know, yeah. Like, first of all, if I buy something, it's because I believe in it. If I collect something, it's because I, I want to like build a relationship with that creator and I believe in the potential of that creator. Um, and the project, and then like, yeah, I'm gonna share it. Yeah. I want everyone to buy into it. Absolutely. I want us all to collect it, and I want it to go up in value because I participate in that. Exactly. And so it's like finally this mutually beneficial relationship that's possible for musicians to have with our audiences, and that is completely new. And it's sort of like the that was like the false promise of Web two. You know? Yes, and absolutely. That, and that and and now we're there. Now we're here. I, I've know? mentioned it in almost every talk that I've done, but yeah. like the differentiation between Web two and three, going yeah. from like building an audience to building a community, and yeah. I think that's so important. And when it's a community, you can actually support each other, not just hypothetically support exactly. each other. Exactly. I think it's so important. Well, yeah, and it's not. It's like you're not looking to monetize your audience. You're looking right. to like they've already them. bought in. Well, yeah. you're looking to yeah. include them. You're looking to yeah. build with them. Yeah. It's like you go from seeing people as like this one one sided. Way of how they can support you. I mean, right. I've done like four crowdfunding campaigns, and I cannot tell you how like soul soul crushing it was to have to be like hey, chilling friends. your family and friends. Like, yeah. yeah, you know. <laughs> I know. I funded I've a movie had, once. Crowdfunding was such a pain. Was, <laughs> like, yeah. yes, because it's like. It's just, it just, is, it feels horrible. Yeah. And so now it's like, okay, yeah, I know you believe in me. You've supported me all these years. But now it's like, here's a way that we can actually be in business together in a sense. Right. You know? No, not, for real. 
obviously like nothing is a uh, financial advice and whatever, <laughs> but it's like when you when you collect an NFT, I think you do it with the expectation, so, you know, it's the intersection of art and finance. It's like right. you do it with the expectation that the project is going to do well. At least I do. Right. And then there's if you're going to buy something, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. There's some that I support just because I want to support people in the community and I don't know that it's ever going to go up in Friends, value people you like, yeah. yeah Artists you like. Yeah, yeah. Or art that I'm just like, this is beautiful and I don't know that it's ever going to like, I don't know what's, we don't know what's going to happen. Right. But like, then there's some stuff that I buy, like a, like board apes that I'm like, you know, these are cool. Am I going to hang it on my wall? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I believe But you see the tremendous value. In yeah, like the, yeah. Like something felt good about that project. So I bought a bunch of them, you know, right. like I minted some and I'm just like, this is cool. So whatever. And that didn't work out too badly for you. I mean, hey. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it was good. No, I think it's awesome. And um, a big thing that I also like to talk about is how, um, like you were saying, like the art world came first and that was logical. And I, I, I do kind of agree as well because, um, you know, anything that can be bought or sold for a significant amount of money just makes sense to transact on the blockchain. It's a yes. safer, better version and Definitely. there's nobody in between. Definitely. And especially coming from working with Universal, I don't know what you want to talk about, but um, <laughs> like going from like a traditional music background, how yeah. is that being finally taking like sovereignty over, over your work and over um, what you put out? Well, I mean, it's incredible, and it's incredible, um, you know, going from this place where last night I was in a room with, like, a bunch of fund people and, right. like, business people. Money guys. <laughs> and I used to walk into those spaces, and I told them this last night, because I'm just, like, I used to be so uncomfortable because it was them and us, right. you know? It was, like, these are the guys who have to like you in order to get what you need to get approved. These are the guys who have to give you, like, I need their acceptance. I need them to see my value, you know? And it seems like everybody's kind of come more towards the center. Like, the the money guys are now seeing the, the value in now art. Now they're asking us for help. Right. Like, yeah. They're seeing the value in creatives. Yeah. They're seeing they're see they're getting a sense of actually what what we're capable of and what we can do. They're valuing us, and the artists are actually seeing like seeing ourselves as business people. So it's like it feels like suddenly these two worlds are coming together, and I love that. And I think. Um, that's, you know, why for me, I mean, there's always going to be a place for labels. There's artists that aren't entrepreneurs. Right. You know? They don't want to do their own work. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're not an entrepreneur, if you're not prepared to work 16 hours a day and hustle your butt off and like, you know, then like, no, sign with a label. Yeah, let them do it. Yeah. Right. But like for people like me who kind of don't fit into, you know, one little box, like that was always the problem too for me was that people didn't really know what to do with me. They're like, oh, you do this, you do this, you do this, you you know. We, who, what is, what's the one thing that you are? And I'm like, I love talking. Okay, so I I've, I'm very much a multidisciplinarian as well. Yeah. I'm, one more time. I'm very much a multidisciplinarian as well. And like, I feel that this space has facilitated the multidisciplinary ideal so totally. much. Like, you don't have to do one thing. You can right. be excellent at a lot of things. Right. And to be successful in this space, you almost have to be like a like a 360 marketing company like yeah. yourself. Exactly. Um, so how has that process been for you? I, th I feel like you're somebody who's always um, worked on your work in multiple ways, like creating yeah. visuals, creating music. Yeah. Um, but how has this process been for you finally be able to take control and do it all, all yourself? Like, <laughs> I mean, or through your team, yeah. It's amazing. I don't really have a team, you know? It's you. I mean, it's me. It's like <laughs> Which is even more impressive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I work uh, as part of teams on other people's yeah. projects now. You know, like I'm yeah. consulting for Async Art. I'm working on another project with a company um, called Authentic Artists, and we're creating a, 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 an AI PFP that comes out of this bigger project that they've been working on for two years. It's all about music. It's all music. It's like a, it's it's a music PFP. It's it's going to be incredible. I'm so excited it's to see AI that. Music. Yeah. I, I feel like it's kind of like it's going to be the thing that is the next, you know, music is sort of primed to have a big moment right now and I yeah. feel like this project is going to be you know not to like show my project but no, please. <laughs> it, it, I, I'm asked to join teams just about every day and this is one of two that I joined you know yeah. I joined Async, you genuinely, and I joined yeah. this project and I'm asked not not even exaggerating every day it, so I feel like I'm super excited about that so that but that, that just to say those are, like I work on other people's teams when it comes yeah. to my stuff it's just me and you do um, everything yeah I do yeah. everything so Amazing. I don't have a manager at this point. I don't, you know, I don't. Um, it sounds like you don't really want one at this, like right now. Like <laughs> I don't need one right now. Yeah. Like at some point, um, I, I have those. I have the relationships that would have been facilitated through a manager. I have them directly now. They reach like, out to you directly. Like yeah. last night, I, you know, it's like I, I, I meet with founders. I meet with VCs. I meet yeah. with, you know. Which Anybody is pretty empowering as well, no? Like Absolutely. as a musician, as a woman, as an artist, uh, like just being able to things. just be taken seriously for what you do, no yes. matter what it, like across all boards, right? Like This, this space yeah. has given me a financial education. Yeah. I've given myself a financial education Through this in this yeah. space. Yeah. Because I didn't have that before. And, yeah. and especially like as a woman, as an artist, yeah. you know, it's sort of like 
I felt like I was never encouraged to embrace like the business side and like the financial right. education side of life. Yeah. And, and as a result, I really got into a lot of bad situations, like with my label deal, with like business managers who- Because nobody who, tells you what to, yeah, you got a no. 50 page contract, what are you supposed to do with that? Like I'll read it, but I'm like, oh, I don't know. It's, yeah. I didn't really want to deal <laughs> yeah. with my finances. Yeah. And so as a result, yeah. I you know ended up with people that stole them, you know? So it was just like, okay, um, this, this is the opposite of that. It's like you have all the freedom, all the responsibility. And so it's like, right. in order to, that's the other thing I always tell artists is like, yes, explore the space, but you, you, it's weird. It's like an onboarding thing. Like you want to onboard people and you also want to like emphasize how important it is to actually understand what is going on in this space. Yes. Like you have to understand finance. You cannot walk in, like that's the thing. It's, it is the intersection. Oh, you're going to get wrecked. Like, you cannot yeah. come into the space without understanding finance, understanding the technology underlying technology, you need to understand why things work here the way they do. Yeah, so I mean, it's, just, you know, it's, it's, it's freedom, total freedom, and total responsibility. Absolutely. So, and, and that's, that's decentralization. That's, no, yeah, like, that's Web3, that's, yeah, company, that's crypto, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, you can't call and be like, hi, I accidentally sent this to this, you know. <laughs> and I've had clients try to do that too, you know. <laughs> like, they lose like, you know, three ETH or something, they're trying to call Coinbase, and they're like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, there's literally nothing we can do, you know? And, and it's amazing because it's so empowering because it forces you to learn. And it yeah. forces you to take responsibility and it forces you to, like, not hand off that responsibility to somebody else. It's, it's true empowerment. You know, I love it. <laughs> and you've done such an incredible job at like taking everything a step further. Like obviously you have this background in music, you have a background in art, but you've really pushed things uh, on the tech side of things, especially through async, um, but creating, again, things that have never been done before um, on a technology level. And like for me, I'm like genuinely curious, like how has that learning process been? Like where did you start with that? What really inspired you to not just put out your music, but to to make it, like, to gamify that process for, for your audience and for the people who, who collect your work? I mean, to be fair, like, I didn't build that. You know what yeah. I mean? Async built that. Async built those tools for artists like me who don't have complex... But no, I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of them, but you, like, you really... Yeah, well, to you, me... You know, utilize them well. Yeah. The thing is, like, getting into this space, I, I see a use... Like, I see a, a... There's room for everything. There's room for people that want to mint an MP3. There's a root, you know, but to me that doesn't interest me as much. Sounds so exciting. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm more interested in art and music that actually really integrates and makes makes use of the underlying technology. Yeah. The stuff that excites me is the stuff that you can only do on the blockchain. Right. Because otherwise, you I just done, release you know, it. Yeah. 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 Like if I'm just doing something that I've done for the last 15 years, but I'm just doing it on the blockchain, why? Right. Like I need to understand why. And to me, the most compelling uses for you know, the most compelling use cases for music, art, blockchain are the things that where it's all baked into one. Absolutely. You know, and where you're really, where we're really um, taking advantage and uh, of the technology and yeah. using Cause it. because it's there. Yeah, yeah, and pushing it and pushing what can be done. And so Async has really done that by providing a way for art to be interactive and programmable and living and breathing and constantly changing. And also, like we were talking about community before, yeah. but like, you know, involving the community in the creative process. Because now it's like my song is out of my hands. Right. They can change it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can do I can't. I can't. I have no control over it anymore. Yeah. Somebody else owns it. They can, you know, obviously I created the different, all the files. I create. I recorded right. all the music. I wrote all the parts. I made all the art. So it was like, in that sense, I had control over all 480 versions because I controlled the underlying stems that yeah. can then get mixed and matched. Into so you work, with, you work with Async, yes. uh, an incredible platform. Tell yeah. us a little bit how that works and yeah. uh, the process, yeah. maybe contextualizing it with one of your drops. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. yeah, so Async is an incredible platform for creators and for collectors. Um, essentially, like, if you wanna, I think the best way that I can explain it is um, when we create either digital art or music in the studio, everything is created in layers. If I'm in the studio, I'm, you know, I've got a layer of vocals, you know, then I have one layer of guitars, one layer of drums, bass, whatever it is, right? And so normally what happens is I would do a bunch of takes, I would choose the best one, and then I would flatten that down into one, you know, one, one song. And export it, yeah. Right, and export yeah. it, and that's how it lives forever. And the same thing with art. If you're working in Photoshop, you've got the different, different layers yeah. of visuals. You make each layer what you want it to be, then you compress it, you flatten it into one piece, yeah. and there is the final piece and forever that's how it lives. and ever, yeah, yeah. right? So with async, you've got all these different layers, but instead of flattening them down and making one uh, permanent piece that, that, that stays in that, in that uh, configuration forever, you mint all of the layers separately. So async stands for asynchronous. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so um, they now function independently. You've got however many layers you have in the art, and you have different variations within each of those layers. So instead of you know, having one static piece, you have different collectors collecting the different layers. They get to then make the choice between like, do I want this variation, this one, this one, this one. And so the piece is changing on any, you know, on any given day with some of these pieces, like the Guild did a piece with 38 artists. Each of them had multiple layers. So they were literally, I don't know, millions or billions. I can't even do the math. Yeah. But like with my Say It's Possible piece, I had uh, five layers of sound. Each of those layers had between three and five different variations. And so we ended up with a piece that has a potential of uh, 480 different versions. Amazing. And I lose control. Like, so when you create on async, it sounds kind of overwhelming. But if you go on and you play with it, you can click through the different pieces. You can see all the different layer states. You can see the changes. You can see, like, you can randomize the piece on the art side and see how it will look in one of these many different permutations. It's, you know, async has basically taken super complex coding that most of us would, well, very few of us would be able to do, right. you know, without really understanding how to code. <laughs> and, um, and they've made it accessible to artists of all levels. So it takes a little while to sort of conceptualize and wrap your head around it, but once you do, it, it, it inspires artists to create in an entirely different way. Like yeah. I, when I was making this piece, so, so I got my, um, my uh, publishing rights back from Universal this year, which Amazing. is like the most perfect timing. Thanks. It was so funny. I thought I was going to have to fight. And, and I wrote this email, because I don't have a manager at this point. Right. And I wrote, yeah. to, I wrote to Universal, and I was like, I was like, dear sirs. You know, like I was so, I was so intense. I was just like, getting ready for a fight. And I'm like, to whom it may concern. Um, <laughs> I'm writing, I'd like to speak to the manager. Yeah, yes. yeah. I was like, I'm writing to inquire about, you know, getting my publishing back, you know. Yeah. And, and I was ready to go. I was like, please advise me as to what I, how to pursue, da 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 da, da you know. And they write back, and they're like, Actually, your 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 rights revert to you this year, so you're all set. Amazing. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, that's it. Like I thought, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to like raise all this money. Like right. I was like, I was like, do okay. a lawsuit. Oh no, I thought I was gonna have to do like an NFT project just to raise the funds to buy back my oh, rights my to then do yeah. what I wanted with my songs. Right. But so I chose say it's possible because that was kind of like the song that launched my career, and um, and I chose to do it on async because I'm like, you know, when I. When I record, the origin of the song was on YouTube. So I recorded it, this, this acoustic song. I recorded it in my bedroom. Well, it was actually, I lived in a little tiny studio in Hollywood. So it, there Studio was no, bedroom. There was no bedroom. Combo. <laughs> I recorded it in my room. Same room your um, mattress was in, yes. Exactly, like just a different wall. Yeah. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and the song really blew up. And it, but it was this straight acoustic, you know, really raw. I think I'd, I wrote the song in under 10 minutes. And I'd played it like right. a few times. And then I'm like, that one. And I just uploaded it to YouTube. And so... It really took off, and um, and then I ended up winning the the first YouTube award for it. So it was this very like community focused because because the YouTube award at the time was voted on by the YouTube community. Yeah. So you know it was all about the community elevating this unknown artist who was me at the time, and um, and my life changed because of it. And then what happened was I signed with Universal Music and Island Records, and I made this album I didn't want to make, and it was all like overproduced, and you know it was um, it was kind of a mess. And so what I wanted to do for like my own process of reclaiming my song was right. to like reimagine it and have a version, like have it be able to exist as a completely acoustic version, have it be able to exist with 13 different instruments and wow. have everything in between. So there's versions in the 480, depending on what the collectors of the stems do, <laughs> there's, there's the potential to have, a, a, you know, acoustic guitar and vocal only, or there's the potential to have 13 different layers of, of, of sound. So, um, yeah, so Async was really the perfect platform for me to do that. It's you incredible. Know. Yeah, I love it. Great. I love it. And that's so, yeah. well, so well put together. Yeah, um, fun. I'm, uh, I, I always like to contextualize like conversations like this with yeah. the idea of hyper modernity. Mm. So like there's this concept that like we've now reached a point where yeah. technology is um, progressing at a rate that we can't comprehend. Yes. So like that's why like most of us don't understand how our computers work. But we don't have we don't we have don't to. Need to. We don't have to. And I think what yeah. a what async's doing I think is really important because they're taking like really complex issues which otherwise would need a whole dev team yes. to assemble. Yes. And allowing artists like yourself yes. to create really innovative works. And like I I I'm incorrectly thinking of it as fractionalization because of this like breakdown right. system. But um, have you seen anything like come out of that that you would never have expected? Like have you seen combinations of different tracks that you were like oh my god I didn't even think 
of that together, and this is so cool. Well, <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I definitely tested a bunch of them, yeah. but there's no way that I listened. 480 to times, no. <laughs> and I mean, when I wrote the piece, it's like, you, the, the thing that I think is so exciting about it is that it forces you to create in a whole different way. Yeah. And that's what I was looking for. Like, I wasn't looking to just replicate exactly what I was doing in Web 2. With less fear, and too, because it has to be, like, you can't. You can, There's no way you can control every single element. Of no, it. you it's can't. Like, yeah. And in a way, it's like, it's similar. I've heard, um, last night I was at an event and I heard Dmitry Cherniak talking about his generative pieces and how yeah. it's like he sort of, you know, the art is in the code and he, you know, codes it in such a way that he believes it's going to give certain outputs and then he lets go of it, you know? And that is even like even more out of control in a way than mine because mine is actually is not generative in that sense. It's right. like, you know. You still create each piece. Right. Yeah, I, I created each, yeah. right. And, and, I, and I wrote each piece and, and recorded each piece knowing that it had to be modular in a sense, that right. it had to fit together in all these different... Keep the key structure or whatever the same. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, and also for my piece, I, uh, I didn't give an option to... This is like a whole bunch of double negatives. I'm just like, I didn't give an option to not have vocals. <laughs> but like, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, in in, in all the other tracks. You had so, to have vocals. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. Bass and bass, you know, bass and strings, drums and percussion, bells and synths, you can turn those off. You can have all the layers on or you can have them all off. But with the acoustic guitar and the vocal, the single vocal, you have to have those in every version. It's so cool. Because I wanted to maintain the integrity of the yeah. song. If it had just been like an instrumental piece, and it's I beautiful that you have that option too. Yeah. 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 So it's like you can do, yeah, you can really customize the experience and then you kind of let go and let the collectors have at it. Uh. That's what's really fun. Then you end up with this situation where you really are creating in an interactive, almost gamified way. You know? Absolutely. And um, and there with the music projects on async, there's also this uh, limited edition element, which is another element. So in addition to being able to, to collect the stems and the master layer, you also can collect these blank records. And then when you hear a mix you like, you mint it. So it's almost like um, recording, you know, a blank CD and recording it when you hear a song you like come on the radio yeah. or something, you know? Like creating and your own mixtape back in the, yeah, yeah like on a record your, or something. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so you mint the record, the permanent record, when you hear the mix that you like, which is controlled so by cool. other collectors. So you don't have the ability to go in and mix it yourself, but you have the ability to, when a mix comes up, you're like, oh, that sounds amazing. I'm going to mint my record now. Which is also another very complicated process, usually, which they're like totally simplifying through this process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you end up with this almost generative project um, feel because depending on how many other people mint that version too, you've got a rare, you know, you've got rare based on like whether it's silver, gold, or platinum, right. and you've got rare based on maybe you're the only person who ever minted mix, you know, 40321 or yeah. whatever, you know? <laughs> this and specific combination. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really fun. And they're, I can't say too much, but Async is about to like further change the game uh, for music NFTs. And I'm an independent artist. I work for myself. I've been asked to join companies before. And like I said, I've joined two projects. This, yeah. You know, I consult on other stuff and I'm helping other artists and I'm helping other companies, but I'm part of the team of two projects. Yeah. One is Async and one is Warp Sound. And with Async, I was the, the process of recording, of creating my project with Async was so inspiring that I really wanted to be part of their team. Yeah. And I feel like that speaks speaks to how inspiring the whole process is, yeah. and also how artist-friendly they are. They're all about creating this experience for creators. Totally. And they're so, I don't know. I, it's really hard for me to talk about it because they're a platform for creators, by creators, and it's an experience unlike anything else I've ever had making my music. But it's so, so it's so authentically Web3 as well. Yes. The fact that you yeah. can like do a project on a platform, have it go really well, and then just work with the team directly. <laughs> the fact that we have that access, because we're so early, right? It's yeah. still so early yeah. that we can be like, I like you guys. They're like, we like you too. Let's work together. Okay. That's so that's true. It. Yeah. it actually went down in a tweet. <laughs> I love like, that. It was, yeah, it actually happened in a tweet because I was, like, I was sharing, I was tweeting about my project, and someone on the Async team tweeted, um, this is like the most Web3, this is like the, right. most, the most... Yeah, literally like on, NFT on like NFT Twitter. Like. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, NFT Twitter. And so I tweeted, and then someone from the Async team said, Tara gets it. Everyone be more like Tara. And then I tweeted back, and I'm like, oh, all the other kids are going to hate me now. You know? And then and then I tweeted again, and I'm like, seriously, all I ever do is talk about Async. Like, anytime I would go into Clubhouse, anytime right. I would go, you know, people would be like, Tara's here, tell us about Async. And I was like, okay. So I said, all I ever do is talk about Async. I should just work with you guys. And, and then um, they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were just sort of like, oh. And we were both sort of like, oh. Like we were kind of joking. And then we're just like, actually. 
And then we, yeah. and then I spoke with the founder, one of the founders, and Lisa, and yeah. then we were sort of, we emailed back and forth a bit, and we were like, this makes sense. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, like, I mean, obviously for me, but maybe for, for some people watching, but I feel like you're one of the people who's really taken best advantage of, uh, of the platform and the way, that, the way that it works. And the fact that you actually, yeah. you, you, you created that understanding for yourself. Yeah. You taught yourself how to use this. Yeah. And, uh, and not just capitalized on it, but really innovated through this, through, through the technology that they created. Like, yeah. you used their framework and, like, actually pushed it to the extent that it can be I pushed. I think all like, the artists on, I mean, they're very, the thing with, with the music side is it's still invite only. So I think they were, they're very selective in making sure that every artist that, that has, there's only been a total of maybe 15 so far, and everybody has really done an incredible job on the music side, you know, um, and that's part of, it's, it's still, you know, they, they've made sure that the, the people who, who they approve to do it really get what they're doing. And are actually going to use it yeah. <laughs> properly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So everybody, I have to say, I, I, I feel just like I'm in good company with like all of the musicians that have, have released async music projects. I love that. Yeah. So you've been you've been in this space, this space being like like the internet space, let's yeah. say, for quite a while, right? You were very present in Web two, yes, and now Web three. Um, but you know, we've talked about this a little bit of you know like the three sixty market company, like ideal. Yeah. So so with async, I think you've really taken advantage of a new technology, and uh, I, I don't think you're stopping doing that either. You know, no. we have the metaverse, <laughs> we have uh, you know. AI, we have yeah. aug uh, augmented reality, we have all these new yeah. um, worlds that we're kind of really burgeoning into right yeah. now in the space. Um, do you have any other like favorite, you know, intersections <laughs> that you're kind of exploring at this point in time? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I laugh because, um, you know, my, my brother kind of led the way for me in this world. So cool. He's, yeah, he was into, um, he started getting into AI, VR, gaming, blockchain, crypto. And it really is all so connected, I mean. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and he, he started getting into that world, you know, years and years ago, and he started, he's a, an investor in the space now, and he cool. started investing, you know, in these different different Web3 companies before we were all talking about Web3. Wow. And, um, and he kind of, like, led the, opened the door for me in that sense to say, I think there's something for you here. You know, you're one of the most brilliant creatives I've ever met. Go learn everything you can about the space and go be the smartest person in the room about it. So yeah, so he, you know, he opened the door for to the world by sort of laying down that challenge and setting that challenge for me saying, you know, you you could really do something here, so go do it. And and I, you know, prior to that was just really focused on being a singer-songwriter, recording albums, uploading music to Spotify, trying to build my audience on web too and like yeah. touring. Like and we don't give ourselves time to like actually research the new tech and yeah. until we do. Well, and I didn't it, even yeah. realize I didn't know it would even be something I I wanted to do. Right. Like I just was so stuck in this. You know, I think. We and from the outside, we talk about finance. Like yeah, as ex creatives, right. we're like, why would we even? Right. Yeah. Right. That was, and that's the other thing too. We we were sort of encouraged not to delve into that as creative. It's like you're either a creative, you're an artist, or you're into money. You're yeah. into, you know, and it's just like actually, that's it's all creative energy. Yeah. The, the same energy that creates a song out of thin air is the same energy that like builds worlds and creates uh, a business or. Andy Warhol, like, business is the finest form of art. There you go. Boom. I mean, like. yeah, and it's we've really been. It's really been a disservice to artists to, to, to sort of separate us, and I think that it's also. I mean, I have a lot, a lot of theories about that, but I think it's like some purpose, like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a lot easier to control a really wildly creative, powerful group of people to like keep them struggling and keep them poor, right? You know, yeah. so anyway, um, <laughs> tea, <laughs> tea, but, but like, yeah, so so you know, my brother kind of um, was into all this stuff before, but I wasn't, you know. I mean, I, would, I was into it when he would tell me about it, but I wasn't actively researching AI and AI right, music. And absolutely. to be honest, as, a, uh, as an acoustic musician, I was terrified. It's the last thing on your mind, probably, uh, yeah. Well, not only the last thing on my mind, but the last thing I wanted was like, wait, machines are going to be able to replace <laughs> me? You know, like, I don't want machines making music. Right. That's my job. Yeah. You know, and, and understanding, like, the, the capabilities of, of AI, that it can, you know, match my voice. It can yeah. do, you know, and... So I went through a phase where I was kind of terrified of that. And then I kind of came around to this place where I was like, no, these are tools. And AI doesn't work without humans. AI works in con connected with, in you know. It's, an, it's entirely dependent on the inputs, right? right. Like you can't just. Right, yeah. right. And, and we can help each other. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, it's a tool. Yeah. And so it's almost like, well, okay, if if when cars were invented, if someone was just like, no, I'm I'm just gonna walk, thank you. I'm good. And yeah, I have like, my horse. Okay, I'm fine. well, yeah. cars are here, yeah. and you know, you can get in one and have a nicer experience of getting, you know, five miles across town, or you. Can, so it's sort of like, how do we use the technology 
uh, to enhance what we're doing. Absolutely. And how do we use it in a way that's beneficial to what we're doing as artists, as creators, as human beings, right? It's like we work together. We can work together. So my brother um, kind of planted that, that those seeds uh, of interest for years ago, but but just recently I got more interested in it, and I actually just joined the team of a project called Warp Sound. And it's the company, Authentic Artists, has been developing this, this collective of AI, of AI artists that can actually perform, and it's all generated wow. in real time. So it's not like, you know, the AI is making the music the same way that a DJ You still have the live making. component, yeah. It's live, yeah. Yeah, it's meant to be live. Yeah. So, and they, in fact, they did something at Tribeca last year. Cool. Um, and you can interact, it's audience interactive, you can interact through commands. They have wow. a Twitch show um, every week now, and you can interact in the chat, you know, so, so cool. the audience can determine is it going to be faster? Do they want slower? Do they want, you know, slime the beat? Like, whatever. There's all these different commands. Yeah. And so it's fully interactive, and the, and the artists, our, our, our AI artists, are um, actually responding in real time the same way that a DJ would at, you know, a festival or so wherever cool. you see. Yeah, like, you yeah. feel the energy of the audience. You feel where they're, what they want, where they're it's at. It's a new level of interactivity, yeah. Yeah, and so it's, uh, so the AI artists are able to do the same thing. And so we're creating right now a PFP project around this um, around this collective of artists, and it's you know full commercial rights and like the ability to generate full songs out of it. It's there's a lot of stuff I can't talk about yet, but it to me is the most exciting music development that I've seen yet in the space. And I feel like we're um, like I said, I've joined two projects. This is one of them. So I'm pretty something excited Something you genuinely about believe in, yeah. Yeah. I think something that's really exciting with, with what you're doing and just this whole like generative aspect or the AI aspect in general yeah. um, is the, the letting, letting go of your creative baby and mm. putting it out into the zeitgeist mm. when it's not even finished. You know, you, right. you finish all the elements that you have control over mm, and then right. you, you, you release that control to yeah. your collectors, to your audience. Yeah. Um, yeah. How has that process been for you? And is it, was it, you know, is it a little bit of killing your darlings or is it now starting to get native to you now that you've been doing it for a little while? Well, I think like when I first released my async project, that it was a little scary because yeah. I'm like, what, like, what are people going to do with this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if it gets stuck on like I can't change the layers anymore. Yeah. What if it gets stuck on a version I don't like? Because there's obviously I didn't dislike anything, but there's versions. It's like with a PFP project. There's like the pretty ones and the really pretty ones. You always have your you favorites. Know? Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, so I'm like I know which versions are my favorite and what combinations of elements I like best, and I don't get to choose now. Right. So I was a little scared. I was like, oh God, what if they leave it on something that like is just kind of meh? And like, <laughs> I, you know, and, and I just got really comfortable with it. And I think like something that happens in this space a lot is this, this idea of building in public and we get really comfortable with it because a lot of things are a little wonky right now. Nothing's you know? perfect yet. We're still at the very beginning. No. Yeah. Especially and like I, AR, AR, all these, all these things. Everything. Yeah. Anything that's complicated. I mean, it's, it's, and everybody, like, we're early. It's like, yeah, we're early. Like that's what everybody says because it's true. It's true. And I think that what I really appreciate as a sort of recovering perfectionist <laughs> is the, uh, the opportunity to let things be a little messy, you know? Like, it is a little messy right now. Perfection doesn't exist, first of all. And like, I have lived so much of my life as a perfectionist and it's really held me back and led to, you know, a lot of unhappiness. And yeah. so kind of being able to say, yeah, you know, everybody, everybody's a little, everything is a, is a little imperfect right now. And that's part of the beauty of it. And that's the space. I mean, like, yes. the fact that we've been so experimental so openly, yeah. I feel like, has been how this space has grown over the past few years. Totally. Like, people don't even realize, like, the CryptoPunks were not meant to be given away for free. They right. tried to sell them. People right. got refunded <laughs> right. by accident. Right. Right? And now it's the most successful project in the space. I mean, yes. so... Little mistakes, um, like, yeah. little missteps, little, like, happy accidents, little things, you know, it's... A, and just the concept, you know, I when I first heard someone say building in public, I was like, oh my god, I love I that. I love that, yeah. Because it takes the pressure off. Like with, yeah. with Warp Sound, we're building in public. Yeah. We're, we're starting our Twitch show. There are bumps in the road. There are things that, you know, we're, we're using bleeding edge technology. Nobody so knows like, everything. Like there's, it's yeah. impossible, yeah. So we're, we're innovating on the fly. Yeah. And, um, and by the time we, you know, by the time we drop the PFP, everything's going to be ironed out and it's going to be, I, I have a feeling it's going to go really well. I believe in that. But it's like, you know, in the meantime, yeah, we're, I built the Discord. There were things that I had to change, you yeah. know, while there were people in there. And I'm like, hey, everybody, sorry if you got locked out of this for a second. And, right. You know, and I feel like we all understand that. And it also humanizes everything in a way. It's like, because I don't, I mean, there's something beautiful about when things function absolutely perfectly from the very beginning. But there's also something really great about seeing a team of people coming together to do something that hasn't been done before and sort of stumbling through it a little. You totally. know, like I love that personally. And it's you, like when you see, I remember the first time I saw a, a, one of my favorite artists mess up on stage and start over three times. I saw like, Radiohead 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw Radiohead. Tom York started a song. I, I can't remember what which song it was, but it was one of his like one of his like bullet. I think it might have been bulletproof. Yeah, something like a huge hit. Yeah, huge song. <laughs> and I think it was bulletproof. And he got into the beginning of it, and he was like, "Oh, I have to." He stopped. It. He's like, "I have to start again." And then he started it again, and they messed it up again. And he's like, oh, I'm really sorry, you know. And then, and <laughs> human. I, yeah, yeah. And I actually saw, oh my God, that happened the other night at the Hollywood Bowl. I saw um, um, James Blake. Yeah, love. Love yeah. James Blake. Yeah. But he started, so he was playing with an orchestra and clearly not his most comfortable thing, but he was trying, you know? Yeah. And, um, and he was playing with the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra and they got to um, uh, retro, Retrograde, yeah. like his biggest hit. And he had to start it over. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, you I think as a performer, that was always my nightmare. Right. But when you're in the audience and that happens, you just feel closer to the artist. You're part of it. Yeah. yeah. Like I I was like, yeah, you know, everybody <laughs> was. Everybody was like, you got this, girl, you know. And and I feel like that is the the funny thing is is as creators, we want everything to be so perfect, but actually I think what 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 the audience and what our what our supporters and what our community actually wants is sometimes to see us as humans, you know, because it humanizes all of us. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you, you segued perfectly into what I, <laughs> what I was about to ask. It's, um, you know, you already talked about this idea of community being a part of the process yeah. and how the, the projects you buy into, yeah. you know, you're part of that community. Yeah. But I feel like a, biggest, a big part of this, you know, when you build Discord servers and do things, yeah. um, the community is part of the building process. And if Definitely. something doesn't go perfectly right, they're going to be the ones to tell you that, and yeah. they're going to help you fix it, essentially. Yeah. So yeah. I love this idea of uh, building in public. And yeah, I think I that, that perfectly, um, you know, encapsulates what we're doing right now in the space. Totally. Um, so I won't keep you here all day. It's, it's, it's such so a fun. it's such a pleasure to talk to it's you about so all of this. Like, you. yeah, it's so nice like, to meet you in like person. I know. Like, it's nice to last. finally, like, put a, <laughs> so nice. put a face. Uh, I love it. But uh, for it. anybody here who's watching who might not be familiar, where can they find you online? And is there any project right now that you'd like to like to plug? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, so, I mean, Twitter is, and it's so funny because I gave up on Twitter over the last few years. I know, and then now it's back, and I'm like, okay, well, I, I used like to live tweet the Oscars when I was a kid, and oh then I didn't gosh. touch it for like five yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did it when I was really actively trying to promote, you know, music stuff, right. and then I'm just like, this is all for politics. Like, I kind of signed <laughs> off in the 2016 elections. I was just like, right, yeah, you're like, I do not want to. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> totally done now. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, last year, it's just like, oh my God, we have to get on Twitter again. So now I love it again. And uh, I'm on there all the time. And that's the best place. I've got a, a, link, um, a sort of a link tree. It's, yeah. not, it's like not a link tree, but a link tree um, in my bio. And it will link to everything I'm doing. And um, we'll put it right yeah. here so that you guys can access Great. it. Great. Yeah. yeah. And please do <laughs> check out the Warp Sound community. That to me is like one of the most exciting things Super I've cool. ever been a part of. And artists, please check out, artists and collectors, please check out Async. It's, uh, it's just unbelievable inspiring and um yeah i've got a lot of other stuff i'm working on too so thank you for asking no of course make sure to follow along tara yeah. is incredible one thank of my favorite you. artists in the space right now you're doing thank like you. incredibly innovative work and that's oh like God. you know Thanks. this you said bleeding edge but i mean we really are at you know a, nothing that we are doing right now has been done before essentially yeah. so it's very very exciting it's pretty fun. and uh, congratulations <laughs> on everything that you're doing so thank you all for watching this has been nfts at wtf my name is david cash i'm here with tara and uh we'll see you later take bye. care bye from new york